In this video, I'm going to talk about why I think the William Optics Zenith Star 73 is one of the best second telescope for any astrophotographer, especially beginners. everyone, Angus Wong here. Um, tonight's video is a little bit different because uh, we're going to be completely inside. Um, it's stormy out there and it's going to be stormy for the next couple of days. So I'm stuck inside. Um, and I wish that I could take this out and do a full demonstration for you guys, but unfortunately that's not going to happen. And on another note, um, I'm not going to be able to keep this telescope for much longer uh, because I just sold it to another person. So I'm going to take this final opportunity to do an overview of why I think this William Optics Zenith Star 73 is a great second telescope for a lot of the uh, beginner astrophotographers. So let's go over some of the specs first. This is a uh, Zenith Star 73, so therefore, uh, according to William Optics, Zenith Star is their doublet series. So uh, there are two elements in here, um, and this is an apochromatic refractor. That means that um, it's got great color correction, and it also uses the latest FPL 53 class. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but you know, trust me, it, it uses FPL 53. So it's um, it's got the best of the best in here. Um, this is coming in at about uh, this is coming in at, at 430 millimeter focal length uh, with an aperture of 73 millimeters uh, and a f-stop of I believe 5.9. If I'm wrong, I'll uh, I'll notice somewhere in the video. So I want to talk about why I think this William Optics Zenith Star 73 is a great second scope. Um, and I mentioned the word second because I think that <clears throat> a lot of beginners should start the hobby with an even lower focal length than this. Uh, I'm talking about in the range of 100 millimeters to 200 millimeters um, because at those focal length, you're really zoomed out. And that's a benefit because you're not likely going to get lost in the night nice sky, especially when you're starting out and you're not too familiar with some of the constellations and some of the star patterns and you don't know where your objects are. So I think that a beginner should start off with about 100 to 200 millimeters. But once you're ready to take the next step, this is where I think the uh, Zenith Star 73 comes in at 430 millimeters, you're starting to actually fill the frame with some of the more popular uh, targets in a night nice sky. Um, for example, the Heart Nebula, the Soul Nebula, and I believe the Rosette Nebula will uh, fill the frame at 430 millimeters if you pair it to a DSLR, um, and you get and you start to get to appreciate some of the uh, finer details of those targets. So that's reason number one, that you know, at 430 millimeters, you're starting, to, you're starting to zoom in to some of your targets, but you're still wide enough to the point where you know, it's still beginner friendly, I believe. Um, the second reason why I think this is a great choice for a second scope is because it is still 
highly portable. Um, this is coming in a little bit over six pounds, a little bit under three kilograms. So, you know, you can operate this with one hand and, you know, it's, it's really compact right now for storage. And then when you're out, when you're out on the field, you can extend this dew shield out. So, um, it's nice and compact. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but anytime I work with a telescope that I can hold one hand, it makes the setup and the entire night 10 times easier. Uh, so that's the second reason, you know, the, the portability and its size. And the third reason why I think this is a great second scope, um, it's because of its price and affordability and what you get out of this. Now, let's be clear. We're talking about astronomy here. So whenever I say the word inexpensive or affordability, I'm speaking in relative terms, okay? Because this is coming in the latest version comes in at about $650 US dollars. That is not cheap in anyone's dictionary, but it is in astronomy and astrophotography. Um, and I think that, again, I'm speaking in relative terms. I think this is a great value because I mentioned earlier that you get you get the latest and the greatest FPL 53 glass. You have one of the best focuser on the market. Um, I think all William Optics, they make really, really good focusers. Um, uh, now this is a Gen 1, Mark 1, so it doesn't have some of the bells and whistles of the Gen 2, but the Gen 2 comes with uh, a handlebar that's, that doubles as a uh, guy scope bracket also a long and really well-made dove plate um, and then lastly the second generation comes with a bath knob mask um, this is not a bath knob mask it's the gen one so um, but again i think for 650 dollars you're getting bath knob mask guy scope bracket really well-made focuser and then top of the line, FPL 53. Um, I think that's, that's really hard to beat. And also, you know, when you look at this thing, you can, you can feel and appreciate the craftsmanship that went into it. Um, and this is gonna sound kind of shallow, but um, I, I really do like the aesthetics <laughs> of William Optics. So um, yes, I will pay a little bit for, this, for aesthetics. So. Sorry if, that's, if that sounds shallow. Um, but yeah, so those are the three main reasons why I think this is a great second scope. Um, the focal length is, is, uh, is it's a little deeper, but still friendly. Uh, it's highly portable, highly compact, um, and it's great value for what you pay <laughs> in the world of uh, astrophotography. So I'm gonna go over some of my personal experience with this uh, refractor. Um, for those of you that know me, you know that um, I tend to baby my belongings, especially if I look at them as instruments. Um, you know, as a tennis player, uh, tennis rackets are are my instrument, and I take care of them really well. Um, and some people think that it's weird that I baby my tennis rackets, but their instruments. I, I, I should take care of them because they allow me to perform on a court. And likewise here. This is a well-crafted instrument that allows me to learn the night sky and um, to image some of the deep, uh, deep space objects. <clears throat> so, and I also have some sort of a attachment to my instrument as well. So the fact that I am letting this go, um, I'm a little sad, uh, but I'm very happy for the next person because you're going to get an, an, an amazing refractor that hopefully will allow you to do the things that I was able to do with this. Um, and so because of that, this is a very special uh, refractor for me. Um, 
The picture qualities that I took with this refractor were not great, but not because of the refractor, it was because of me and my, and my lack of knowledge and skills. Um, but despite the quality of the pictures came from me, um, I did the most amount of learning with this telescope and that is why it's so special to me. Uh, I learned how to set up my first go-to mount the Skywatcher HGQ5 Pro. I learned how to connect the mount to my laptop and all the associating uh, software. <clears throat> I learned how to guide using this refractor that enabled me to take longer exposures. I learned how to play solve using this refractor that allowed me to add data to existing projects and have those really long, uh, those really long sessions. Um, so, yeah, I really enjoy my time with with my with this refractor. Um, it, it it taught me so much, uh, and that's why I said that this is a great second refractor because. At a focal length of 400, I was a little bit more zoomed in. I was getting a bit more detail on my nebulae, but at the same time, I wasn't lost in the sky. And because of that, I was able to learn so much more. So, um, I'm a little sad uh, that I'm going to let this go, but I'm also very happy for the next person um, because I know that you're going to get an amazing refractor and it's gonna it's it's going to open up you know your world as far as you know if you're if you're a beginner so I, I I really I really recommend all beginners to consider this um, as your second refractor um, you won't regret it and there's something about holding on to a William optics in your hands because you know that you're holding on to quality so that's it. Um, sorry I couldn't be out there uh, this in this video, but uh, next one. Next one we'll go back out there after the rain goes away. Uh, until then, um, clear skies. <laughs>